Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome back from the break. This is the second segment of Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today. And for those who will listen in later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, this is the recording for Saturday, June 24th, 2023 on the Gregorian calendar and on the Hebrew calendar year of 5783. It is the month of Tammuz. It is the fifth day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. So I have a couple announcements to recap for this upcoming week. Um, just first and foremost, uh, yes, this is uh, this service is pre-recorded. Um, we had a glitch in one of the programs that um, actually uploads to YouTube, which is the beginning of the whole process of uploading and making sure that the service gets posted to where it needs to get posted each and every week. Um, so because it was a pretty severe glitch, we are pre-recording ahead of time so that way uh, there's no problems with or no worries about getting the services out there on time to all of the platforms that we uh, post to. So for those, again, who are tuning in just on YouTube and Rumble, yes, you're getting the services ahead of time. Uh, those of you who only follow on the social media platform, uh, we will uh, be posting them at, at the appropriate time. So um, also, um, as far as announcements, um, we are continuing our Bible study and we are going to be reading from the Gospel of John chapters 1 to 10 this upcoming week from the English Standard Version. We've already covered now three of the Gospels. We're on the last one, uh, the fourth Gospel, which is John. So we'll be reading chapters 1 to 10 in this upcoming week. And for those that are partaking in in the class that our ministry is offering, Hearing from God, we are continuing to meet Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, and as I mentioned on part one when I did the announcements, um, if you missed this round um, with, uh, with classes and you would like to take, take it, it in the future, please let me know so we can make arrangements in the future for that. Uh, so, and, and, and I can certainly touch base with you as well. Now, if, if you have prayer requests uh, and um, are not going to be in the class, please, uh, uh, please leave your prayer requests. We would be glad to pray for each and every one of you. Another announcement we have is next Saturday is July 1st. So that is the first Shabbat for the month of July. So we will be having Holy Communion. Um, just as a reminder, um, uh, there are two opportunities in any given month to come to the table of the Lord. Um, some, some months is, is more than, than two, depending on the holiday that is going on. Of course, Passover um, uh, presents more opportunities. Um, that's one of the examples. But on any given month, there are two opportunities to, to partake of Holy Communion, to remember the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Yeshua HaMashiach, what he has done for us to redeem each and every one of us. So we're honoring him by doing this. And he asked us to do this in remembrance of him. So um, we usually do, the, do it on the first Shabbat of every Gregorian calendar month and also on the new moon, which ushers in a new Hebrew calendar month. So those are on every every month. Uh, you can pretty much count on those two uh, two occasions. So with that being said, we're going to open with our opening prayer for this segment, and then we're going to um, read from the Brit Kadasha scriptures. There's only two segments of scripture this week. It's a it's a shorter um, it's a shorter Shabbat service than what we normally do, and um, then we will get into the altar call and then close out Shabbat service for this week. Avina Malkina, our Father, our King, once again, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for allowing us to be in your presence first and foremost, for also giving breath to us. We know that the breath in our lungs come from, 
comes from you exclusively. We just thank you. We thank you for each brand new day because each day is a gift from you. And this day in particular is Shabbat. It is the Sabbath. It is the seventh day of the week, the day that you sanctified as the most holiest day of the week. And you showed us by a perfect example because you are a perfect father who gave a perfect example in, in that you did all of creation in six days and you rested on the seventh, the seventh being Shabbat. Father God, we thank you for all that you, you do, all that you are, you have done for us and all that you're about to do. We ask that your Holy Spirit continue to lead us and guide us and direct us in the remainder of Shabbat service. Show us what it what is important for us to grasp and ingest and digest and make a part of ourselves to incorporate it in our spirit, in our soul, and walk with the Lord. Father God, we give you all of our thanks, all of our praises, and all honor and glory definitely belong to you. We just love you, Father God. We pray this prayer in the name above all names, the most mightiest name of all, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. And in the ancient days, the high priest sounded the shofar, to gather Benaiah Israel, and we are going to to uh, sound a shofar now as well. In a moment, I am going to pause it for you to listen to some praise and worship. As I have mentioned on the first segment, we do not incorporate music in this recording. Um, however, we I do post to four social media platforms of MUI, Facebook, USA.Life, and Gab. And I um, will start off with the scriptures for this week. A series of songs, part one and part two uh, of Shabbat service for both YouTube and Rumble, and then another series of songs. Uh, those songs can be used for part one and part two. There are suggestions um, for, um, for Shabbat service. However, if you have your own praise and worship that you prefer to listen to, that's fine as well. Um, we just don't incorporate the, the songs into the recording. There were so many issues. Uh, that occurred when we began to post online and we we saw that many people were actually losing their platforms um, and so we just decided to keep it simple uh, and not have any issues. Now I, I understand that people are incorporating music with disclaimers. Um, we don't do that. We, we just decided to keep it the way it is and there's a there's a bonus to that. Um, uh, if I were to do that, unless I mentioned the name of the artist, these artists are not getting credit for that, for, for me incorporating music in my recording. However, by posting uh, it on the social media platforms the way that, the way that we do it, uh, you are clicking onto that song uh, and it redirects you right to their YouTube channel, to the artist. And this is their calling, so they should, you know, this is what they do, and this is their music, and they should get credit for it. And um, many of them are monetized, and by being monetized um, and getting so many views, YouTube apparently tallies up those views and pays them that way. So we want to be able to support them, and this is a way that we can. So that, that that's a positive here. They bring us such highly anointed music, so definitely you want to you want to support them if you can. And this is an easy way to support 
our, our praise and worship leaders um, that bring us some wonderful music. Now, when you uh, go on to their, um, their YouTube channels, I, many of them have hyperlinks, which will lead you to uh, other, you know, their web pages where they, you may be able to actually purchase their music. And if you're able to do so, please, please support them. Um, like I said, this is what they do for the kingdom of heaven. So we are to work together as a body, a Messiah and, and help one another. So just a little note as to why we do things the way we do. And it's a lot of posting uh, granite, um, but um, there is a reason behind that. And I do select, uh, I, I do select a lot of non-labeled uh, musicians, meaning they're independent of record labels. So any kind of support that we can give to them, um, I know they appreciate. Um, and the other thing is, is, is there that many of them are so talented and so anointed by the Lord. So we want to absolutely work with them. With that being said, I'm going to pause it and please um, enjoy some praise and worship. We do praise and worship. And I just want to say, just because it's not incorporated in this recording does not lessen the importance of praise and worship because indeed praise and worship is one of the most important elements of any service. We are created to praise and worship our creator. And that is one of the main things we're going to be doing in, in eternity is praise and worshiping our King. So it is highly important. So with that being said, I'm going to pause it for you to listen to some praise and worship when, when you have done so hit play and we will uh, proceed with the Brit Kadasha scriptures. Okay. The Brit Kadasha is also known as the new covenant and some call it the new Testament. We've got two segments to read from and the first one is Matthew chapter 26, and we are going to be reading from um, verse 1 through 35. The conspiracy grows. Now it happened that when Yeshua had finished all these words, he said to his disciples, you know that Passover comes in two days, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be executed. Then the ruling Kohanim and elders of the people were gathered together in the court of the Kohanim Gadol named Caiaphas. They plotted together in order that they might seize Yeshua by stealth and kill him. But not during the festival, they were saying, so there won't be a riot among the people. A woman anoints Yeshua for burial. See, there was strife going on. You know, we know Yeshua was definitely appointed by Adonai. And here we go uh, with, a, with a great parallel here. Uh, Moses was appointed. We know uh, Samuel had been appointed as judge, but, but Adonai was king, but they weren't satisfied. So they wanted, a, they wanted a physical flesh and blood king. And here uh, we've got, we've got uh, the Kohanim, the, the ruling Kohanim uh, are not accepting who Yeshua really is, and absolutely he was appointed and anointed. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords, then, now, and forever. So a woman anoints Yeshua for burial. Now, while Yeshua was in Bethany at the house of Simon, Amazora, a woman came up to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive oil, and she poured it on his head as he was reclining at the table. But when the disciples saw this, they were indignant, saying, why this waste? It could have been sold for a lot and the money given to the poor. But Yeshua, knowing this, said to them, why do you cause trouble for this woman? She's done me a mitzvah. You always have the poor with you, but you won't always have me. For when she poured this, all on, for when she poured this oil on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Amen. I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in all the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. 
He traded and sold for silver. Then one of the twelve, the one called Judah of Creod, now in other Bibles, it's Judas Iscariot, uh, went to the ruling company and said, what are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? And they weighed out 30 shekels of silver for him. And then on Judah began looking for a chance to hand him over. Now on the first day of Massa, the disciples came to Yeshua saying, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, my time is near. At your house I am to keep the Passover with my disciples. The disciples did as Yeshua had ordered them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when it was evening, Yeshua was reclining at the table with the twelve. As they were eating, he said, Amen. I tell you, one of you will betray me. And being very sor sorrowful, they began each one to say to him, I'm not the one, am I, master? And he replied, the one who dipped his hand in the bowl with me, he's the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes just as it is written about him. Woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And Judah, the one betraying him, replied, I'm not the one, am I, Rabbi? Yeshua said to him, you've said it yourself. Now they were... Now, while they were eating, Yeshua took matzah, and after he offered the bracha, he broke and gave to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for, the, for many for the removal of, of sins. But I say to you, I will never drink of this fruit, of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. After singing the Hallel, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Yeshua said to them, This night you will all fall away because of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. But Peter replied to him, Though I'll fall away because of you, I'll never fall away. Yeshua said to him, Truly, I tell you this very night before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Even if I must die with you, Peter says to him, I'll never deny you. And so said all the disciples. So the next reading we have is from the book of Romans, we've got the 13th chapter. Um, so all 14 verses we're going to read. Respecting authority, let every person submit himself to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist, exist are put in place by God. So um, this actually also parallels the Torah portion. So whoever opposes the authority has resisted God's direction, and those who have resisted will bring judgment on themselves for leaders cause no fear for good behavior but for bad now if you do not want to fear the authority do what is good and you will get his approval for he is God's servant to you for, for your good but if you do evil be afraid for he does not carry the sword for no reason for he is God's servant and avenger who inflicts punishment on the evildoer therefore it it is necessary to be in submission not only because of punishment but also because of conscience for this reason, you also pay taxes for the authority are God's servants attending diligently to this very thing. Pay to everyone what is due to them. Tribute to whom tribute is due. Tax to whom tax is due. Respect to whom respect is due. Honor to whom honor is due. Owe no one anything except to love one another for, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the Torah. For the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor, therefore love is the fullness of the Torah. Besides this, you know the time that it is already the hour for you to awaken from sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first came to trust. 
and that's true for all of us. I mean, definitely uh, the, the day of the Lord coming again is closer each day. The night is almost gone and the day is near. So let us put off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and envy. Instead, put on the Lord, Messiah, Yeshua, and stop making provision for the flesh for its cravings. And that is the end of the Brit Kadasha scriptures. We're going to recap on the Torah, the half Torah, and the Brit Kadasha very briefly. So um, again, last last week we read Parashat Shalak. Uh, the sin of the ten spies and the entire generation of, of people rescued from Egypt was sent to, sentenced to die while in the desert. Uh, they could not cross over into the promised land. This week's reading the hard truth of their condition begins to sink in and the people bemoaned their fate and rebelled further by attempting to overthrow the Lord's designated leadership um, and their rebellion was instigated and organized by Moses' cousin, Korah, or, or we know him as Korah, who, along with co-conspirators from the tribe of Reuben, was swiftly judged and put to death, thereby vindicating the Aaronic priesthood and Moses' leadership of Israel. So um, there were four separate... Um, Rebellions were mentioned in this parashat. Uh, Korah against Aaron, Dathan and Abram against Moses, the tribal chiefs against Aaron, and finally the entire community against Moses. The chief conspirator, however, was Korah, a member of the Philistite clan who appeared to be involved in all four of the rebellious uh, movements. And Korah, as I mentioned, was a cousin to Moses, also to Aaron, because um, Aaron was Moses' brother. And he rationalized that he should be the head of the Kohathite clan instead of his, instead of his cousin, Etzaphan, since he was the firstborn of the Kohath's second son, whereas Etzaphan was not even a firstborn son. According to Jewish tradition, Korak was accustomed to power in Egypt and preferred the old order of the primogeniture laws. The Midrash states that he gained his great wealth by discovering some of the treasures that Joseph had hidden in Egypt, which he took for himself. And it is possible that he served as a liaison with the Egyptian royalty and helped organize the taskmasters. And in, indeed, Korak appeared to have lived as a prince back in Egypt. At any rate, here is a condensed genealogy of uh, Levy that indicates some of the relationships within the tribe. We have Co the, the, the tribe of Levi was Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. And again, under Gershon, we have Libni, Shemaya, and Eliasaph. Um, and then uh, was, the, was the clan leader, Kohath. Um, we have um, Izhar, Korah, Nepheg, and Zikri, and Korah was the clan leader. Um, the other branch from that is Amram, Aaron, Miriam, and Moses, and Aaron had the priesthood. Uh, Hebron, um, also, and Uziel. We have Mishael, Eliasaphan, and Sitri, and Eliasaphan was the clan leader. And then Merari, we have Mali and Mushi, and Zuriel was the clan leader. Now Gershon handled the woven materials of the of the tabernacle, and um, Merari the wooden parts, and Kohath the vessels. So Korak argued um, that his father was one of the four brothers, as it says, um, and um, he was just pushing, you know, pushing his limits and trying to elevate himself. And the parashat begins with Korah and the 250 leaders of Israel confronting Moses and Aaron, telling them they went too far. 
and that they're elevating themselves when indeed we know that they did not. Moses fell on his face, challenged uh, that challenged Korah and his company to offer um, incense, sacred incense at the Holy of Holies in the taber tabernacle the following morning. And this ritual was the most sacred of the services in the sanctuary permitted only to the high priest, the Kohen Gadol, um, and only under special circumstances. If their incense was accepted, that he said would approve their worthiness for the Aaronic priesthood um, to establish his credibility as the leader of the people instead of the heads of the tribes of Reuben. Moses then called for Dathan and, and Abram, but they refused to meet with them. Um, so the following morning, Korah and the 250 leaders of Israel appeared before uh, the, the tent of meeting and their, their fire pans ready to offer incense and the whole assembly of Israel stood nearby and watched the power encounter unfold. At the Shekinah glory, the Lord suddenly appeared and the Lord spoke to Aaron and Moses saying that he would now destroy the people in an instant. But they fell on their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and will you be angry with all the congregation? So the Lord told them to instruct the people to move away from the surroundings of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. So then, we, as we know what happened is uh, they all got uh, the ground opened and they were pulled down to Sheol alive and the ground covered them. And the people offering incense, all 250 of them were consumed by fire. And the following day, the entire community um, rose up in rebellion against Moses and Aaron, accusing them of bringing death upon the Lord's people. And then a plague uh, broke out, and Aaron was uh, waving incense in, in interceding for the people until it stopped. But there was 14,700 died because of it. And as a final test, um, the staffs of each tribe, of the prince of each tribe, uh, were taken in to the, the, the tent of testimony, the, te the tabernacle. And uh, Adam I said, that, you know, he would indicate by the staffs who he has appointed. And we know that Aaron's staff budded and it also blossomed and produced almonds. So, and it was very clear that, yes. Um, Aaron was appointed, and so was Moses appointed. In conclusion, Korah established the, the, the this parasha, actually this Torah portion, established the authority of Moses um, as the leader of Israel and the authority of, of Aaron as God's chosen priestly line. So, um, That was the Torah portion once again. So um, the half Torah portion, we also saw rebellion of the people. They were not satisfied that uh, they had a, had a judge in Samuel and they had Adonai as their king. Uh, and then when Samuel actually confronted the people after they had insisted on meeting an earthly king and they were given King Saul. He really let them know that, you know, Adonai had been their king and they, they dejected, they rejected that by wanting a flesh and blood king. And the Lord gave them what they wanted. Um, so the first king was King Saul. The people were afraid that they sinned by asking for a king, but Samuel comforted them, comforted them by saying, do not be afraid. You, you have done evil, but yet do not turn aside from following Adonai, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Do not turn aside after empty things that cannot profit or deliver, for they are empty. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great name's sake, because it has pleased the Lord to make you a people for himself. And in the Brit Kadesha readings, in the, in, in the reading in Matthew, we see that also um, Yeshua was being challenged um, 
by those that didn't want to accept that he was appointed and anointed as well. And then also in um, the new, the second reading, um, reinforce the instruction that we are to submit to God's chosen authority. If God chooses, truly chooses someone to be in a leadership role, we need to accept that, that it is God's choice. The Apostle Paul emphatically stated that uh, Christians are to submit to civil authority since they have been established by God. We are further warned that whoever resists that God-established authorities will incur judgment. And that is really, um, that is the end of all of the readings. Father God, we thank you for this most powerful, powerful um, Shabbat and all of the readings. We need to revere you, God, because you know all things and you have everyone's best will and plan at heart. Um, and when you, ha you appoint certain people, you appoint them for a reason. And Father God, we need to look to you for answers and for solutions and for guidance in, in all things. And by doing that, we can't go wrong because you will never leave us. You never forsake us. You will never do things to harm your people. You mean you, you, you long to bless your children. And if we're looking to you and being obedient to you, we know that you will bless us because you have promised to do so. But we also see what happens when, when rebellion occurs with Korah, with, with, with the people being, being told uh, about King Saul, you know, wanting to have a, a flesh and blood king. Father God, we thank you for all that you are, all that you do. And we thank you that you are steadfast and you're unchangeable because we can count on you. You are solid. You're our rock. You're our foundation. You're our high tower. You're someone that we can count on through thick and thin. You are our Abba. You are our Father. And we just love you. We give you all our praise and all honor and glory belong to you. We pray this prayer in the mighty name, the name above all names, Yeshua HaMashiach. So we're going to move into the altar call. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ, through Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua the Messiah. Yeshua, his name means salvation. And salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. And the wages of sin are death. Their separation from our Heavenly Father who created us. Our Lord took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and we could be reconciled to the Father. Prior to his coming, there was a, an animal sacrificial system that was in place, and the shedding of blood occurred from those blemish-free, perfect animals to cover the sins of the people. However, when Yeshua laid down his life on the cross for all of us, it removed the sins forever. He is known as the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. He is the Savior. He is the Messiah who was, is, and is to come. And Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. Now the world will tell you there's many paths to get to heaven. That is just a lie. If that were so, Yeshua would never have had to come and die a horrific death in order to redeem mankind. What he did was reverse the curse that happened in the Garden of Eden. And he had to come as a man because the first Adam was a man. And that's where the original sin derived from, from Adam and Eve. So he made, he was perfect, blemish-free, spotless, sinless. And he 
redeemed us all by his finished work on the cross. He also took our illnesses and afflictions, and we could say by his wounds we are healed. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. You know, everyone has free will to choose. And everyone has to make that choice for themselves. No one can make that for you. God does not force his way on you. And no one can, you can't ride into heaven on the, on the coattails of someone else. Just because your grandmother was a devout believer doesn't mean that all of her offspring are going to make it to heaven because of her. Now, she's a good example, but you yourself as an individual must make that decision to accept or reject Yeshua as your Lord and Savior. He loved you so much that he died for you. He died for each and every one of us. For everyone that's ever walked the face of the earth is walking the face of the earth or will in the future walk the face of the earth. All of the sins were heaped up on him. He became sin. So we might become righteous through him. Because he was perfect. He was so perfect. And he's the only one that could be our sacrifice. And, and he did it willingly for us. We can never repay him. He paid our sin debt in full with his very life. First John chapter 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He's already done it all for us. All we need to do is accept him and ask him to be, call in the name of Jesus, call in the name of Yeshua, ask him to be our Lord and Savior, confess your sins, Repent, turn away from your sin, and he will forgive you. He will forgive you. You cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless you are born again and saved. Yeshua explained this to Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee back in his day. So it's very clear. If you have not given your life to Yeshua, if you are not born again and saved, and you would like to become a member of the family of God, you can say this simple prayer with me now. Dear God, I come to you. I come to you today to confess my sins, to confess that I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. And I do believe that Savior is Yeshua. It is Jesus, who died on the cross, was buried, and resurrected and is sitting at your right hand father god and is coming again to rule and reign he is the savior he is the messiah he is the king of kings and the lord of lords and i truly believe that and i accept you yeshua as my lord as my savior i thank you for paying my sin debt in full i'm asking you to forgive me of any of my sins and i know you've already paid for them and i accept the gift of salvation i accept the gift of eternal life with you please send your holy spirit to live inside me to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life and i believe through you and you alone yeshua that i'm saved healed born again delivered and set free from sin and the consequences of sin and am now healthy of mind body and soul in jesus yeshua hamashiach's precious mighty awesome name amen and amen and if you've said that prayer with me welcome to the family of god i am going to encourage you to get into a bible-based church or messianic congregation one that teaches and conducts service from the holy bible 
and not doctrines of men, doctrines of the world, different religions, and all kinds of gobbledygook, as we call it, but sticks to the word of God, because that's true, and there's no error in the word of God. God cannot lie. He is not man that he can lie. So everything proceeding from the mouth of God is truth and something that we can count on. I would encourage you to get a hard copy of the Bible. You can go to Bible Hub or Bible Gateway and, and look at the different versions and select the one that you're most comfortable with to start with and then set out to read the Bible. Uh, sit down before you read the Bible, um, pray, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. The Holy Spirit's an excellent teacher and he'll show you things that you might have just glossed over. Um, he'll bring things to your attention through the written word. And that is the Greek word for the written word of God is called logos, L-O-G-O-S. So um, I am going to also encourage you to get involved in uh, your local congregation's Bible study as well. Develop a prayer life. Pray to the Lord. Um, also talk to the Lord. He is there with you all the time. He is with all of us. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He is your Abba Father. He's your Heavenly Father. You are now part of the family of God. He has put his name on you and sealed you with his Holy Spirit. He loves you and he wants to have a relationship with you. Just like he related to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. He, he had also wanted to have relationship with Benai Israel at Mount Sinai, but they didn't want to hear from him because they were terrified and they decided that, you know, they would do whatever he said and Mo Moses could have the relationship with him. And Moses did. Um, he, he did. And there were several others throughout the Bible um, that when you read the Bible, you're going to see had direct relationship with the Lord. Um, they talked to the Lord. They heard from the Lord. The prophets certainly did. Uh, King David did, for example. And we know Yeshua abided in the Lord all the time. He was the second of the Godhead, so absolutely. But when he was here as a man, he prayed often. He went off by himself to, to talk to the Lord. He was so to, to God. Um, because he was so connected. And he looked, you know, again, he is the second of the Godhead. So, um, with that being said, um, I am going to bring this Shabbat service to a close. And as Shabbat draws to an end, the aroma of sweet spices lingers as the flame is extinguished until next week. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord Adonai is my strength and my soul. He also has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who creates the various spices. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the Universe, who creates the lights of fire. And blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the Universe, who distinguishes between holy and secular. The ironic blessing, or the ironic benediction, or the, also known as the priestly blessing, is found in Numbers, the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. This is when Adonai spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. Um, he wanted to put his name on the children of Israel, and he wanted to bless them. And he gave specific words to be spoken over them. Once again, if you were born again and saved, God has put his name on you. You are his child. And he has sealed you with his Holy Spirit. So Adonai loves to bless his children. So this blessing is also for you, for the family of God. I'm going to say it in Hebrew first, and then I will say it in English. Adonai 
ista Adonai panavaleka vea samleka shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Shavua Tov, everyone. Have a good week. God bless each and every one of you. Uh, don't forget, we have the Bible study going on. And for those that are engaged in um, the class Tuesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our free conference call.com channel. Again, God bless each and every one of you. And again, Shavua Tov. Have a good week.